Hello guys and welcome to season four, episode nine of the MSC Performance Podcast. Uh, last episode was a goodbye and this episode is a hello as we introduce a new coach to the team, uh, Kitty. So hello Kitty. Hello everyone. I'm so thrilled to be here. Uh, yeah, so today's just going to be a bit of a, an introduction to Kitty so you get to know her a little bit more. Uh, she's going to be working here, running barbar clubs and the Met concession. So it's good to get to know the uh, the person behind the coach. So yeah, without further ado, do you want to introduce yourself? Tell us a little bit about what you've been doing the last couple of years. Yeah. Um, so hello, everyone. My name is Kitty. Um, I'm currently completing my master's degree in strength and conditioning. Um and I have been doing some bits of coaching throughout this past year with some academy players at uh, Birmingham City Football Club, Worcester Warriors, some work with our university's sports scholars, um, University of Birmingham triathletes, so a good variety. Um, and then before that, I was working as a personal trainer in commercial gyms. So that's kind of my coaching background. But the thing that you're most famous for is the Zumba. Yes, yes. I don't know how Zumba. I forgot that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So I've, yeah, I've been a Zumba instructor since I was 14 years old. Um, so that's, that's 100% my passion. Hmm. But I kind of just stopped after like, when lockdown happened yeah. and stuff like that. So because with the strength and conditioning, I'm right in saying that that wasn't always your thing that you wanted to pursue, you decided to do a, a masters in strength and conditioning but that wasn't your first degree it wasn't yeah, yeah. it's it's been an interesting journey because I have um so I'm from Hungary and I moved to the UK to do a bachelor's in food development and innovation yeah so I've got this background in more so like food um quality assurance microbiology food de- product development itself yeah, cool. um so yeah, and I was doing the personal training alongside and I even in my like second year, I kind of felt like this is not going to be what I'm, I'm going to be doing. Um, did you did you finish your degree or did you decide? I did. You did. I did. Yes, I finished with the first class. Fantastic. Well, then, that's the caliber of person that you need at MSC. Yes. Regardless if you like it or not, you still don't get the first. Yeah, work degree. ethics, right? Uh, well, there you go. Absolutely. <laughs> um, so what do you think was it that made you want to pursue strength and conditioning? I think it was, um, so I was working in commercial gyms for a year, a bit more, a bit longer than a year. Um, And I really enjoyed working with people. So I really liked helping people just changing their lives and getting to where they want to be um, and help them smash their goals. But I think I kind of got a client base who weren't really willing to put in the work kind of towards the end of my career so-called and um in commercial gyms and I wanted to work with a population who was really dedicated and committed to what they want to achieve um and that's why I thought about just moving into more an more of an elite environment and sports um so yeah, that, that was kind cool. of behind it. Okay, cool. Um, do you want to tell us a little bit more about the, the education? Because I think it's pretty cool, like what you've been doing, like with your placements, like what do they entail mm-hmm. uh, working at, like, for example, Birmingham City? How did that how did that go? Yeah, so it came up because um, one of my friends is a strength and conditioning coach for the academy team. And he was kind of just asking um, whether I wanted to come on board and just assist him on the sessions, on the gym-based sessions that he's doing. So he's taking over the field-based sessions. Yeah. And I'm kind of just assisting there, um, lead, leading the warm-up, um, brainstorming ideas for the session itself. Um, so that's what what we're kind of doing there um with the Worcester Warriors that was a part of my course actually yeah um so the academy players were coming to us to the university to do the sessions and again it's more of like an assistance of delivering the pre-return program so I didn't have much control programming um yeah, at Worcester Warriors, it was just leading the session itself. But now you're ready to step into that. Uh, I am that role. so ready. Uh, <laughs> yeah, fantastic. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I guess this is the next step. Is obviously taking a little mm-hmm. bit more um, of a hands-on, having a bit more say in kind of what the program is. Obviously, you yeah. get that with like the elite members that you'll be uh, looking after, which I'm sure you're very excited to uh, to look into. Yeah, um, I was really keen on it. Yeah. So yeah, I think yeah. So yeah, working with elite has its 
pros and its cons compared to working with the gym mm. pop, like you said, the people are normally a little bit more uh, dedicated to the mm. training, but there were other problems. And obviously motivation is still a big part, but I think mm-hmm. you'll find a lot of people a little bit more motivated than yeah. your yeah. than your people that would typically attend a, a commercial gym. So yeah, I feel like with the with that kind of population, it brings a new set of problems. Oh, that, that, let's not say problems, challenges. 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 <laughs> yeah, it brings a new set of challenges of how to hold them back and how to educate them on the recovery side of things and yeah. the minimum effective dose and all of that. And I I quite enjoy that Great. side of it. So yeah. I always find that you have the two camps of people and it's yeah. the people that you're either having to, to hold back from <laughs> doing more training, which is a lot of people here, which is a great problem to have. Yeah. And then the other people that you're trying to encourage them to do a little bit more, yeah, kind yeah, of be yeah. a bit more proactive 100%. in pushing things. Uh, and like I said, both, both have their, their challenges. Right. Um, so yeah, what are you most excited about in terms of working at MSC Performance? Ooh, I think, hmm, let me think of that. So I think I'm really excited about just the overall atmosphere of the place and how close near the members are with with the staff and with each other like I think that's a really great thing to have within the gym environment to just have that you know friendly banter and all of that I I love that about MSC um and to be honest I I was really excited to work with all of the staff members here because everyone is so knowledgeable um that I thought it would be a really good thing for my own education to work with you guys yeah 100 percent. so it it works both ways i mean we've been doing it a long time but both me and mark is slightly older than you um (laughs) slightly Uh, Slightly. so we graduated uh, a while back now so it's great to have someone come through that's just you know straight out of university Mm -hmm. out doing the masters and hopefully can bring some new stuff and hopefully we can provide the experience and it's I think it's going to be a mutually beneficial yeah, uh, partnership. 100%. So yeah, I think it's going to work uh, really good. So in terms of your own training, what do you mm-hmm. what do you currently do? What do you what do you enjoy doing? And what's your uh, what's your passions within training? Yeah, so I've got a, my problem is is that I I want everything all at once. Yeah, <laughs> it, it doesn't really work like that. Um, so at the moment, I'm kind of just trying to bring my strength back up. Um, I am on the Barber Club framework We've at the moment. Up, yeah. <laughs> yes. Yes. Yeah, so um, so I can relate to the members a little bit more. So that's that's a lot of fun. But before that, I was training four times a week, just strength mainly. Um, I haven't really done any like aerobic work. Um, and I really, really enjoy Olympic weightlifting. Yeah. Um, I remember you saying the Olympic, that's something that you want to develop and start to, yes. to get back into. Yeah, 100%. Um, I just felt like I needed to start off with building a little bit of strength Build in the there strength back up. and yeah, then, sure. then moving into more like Olympic yeah. weightlifting. So you're doing the, the Barber Club programme three yes. times a week. You're taking part in the Metcons. Yes, I am. Um, which... Yeah, you will be seeing me on the gym floor on a Tuesday, yeah. gasping for it. Literally on the floor. <laughs> Literally. Uh, yeah. I think it's like you said, it's good to, to get an understanding of, I mean, it's not a prerequisite for understanding it, but it's a good idea to, to have done the program and so you know how people mm. feel and you can kind of relate to people when they're trying to push for that last part. You can also then say, oh, I've done this. I know how it feels. It is nice to have that kind of uh, yeah, right. relatability to it. And it, it does help know what they're kind of going through. Yeah, so, I, I 100% yeah. agree. And it will be a great bonding experience for us as well. <laughs> all, so. all, in it, all in it together. <laughs> yes. Um, where do you think your, your passions lie with the training? You said, obviously, your big passion is on trying to help people hit their goals. <clears throat> is there any mm-hmm. kind of other passions that you enjoy like within training, like obviously the Olympic lifting is a big one. Mm-hmm. You said, yeah, I think it's, uh, I think it's the technique side of things that yeah. I, I really enjoy. Just helping people to move better. Um, yeah, the mobility side of things as well. I yeah, think that, that's that's definitely cool. something that I'm. I'm that was something about. that was noted in your uh, induction <laughs> as, your, as your demo to squat. It was uh, a, a, an Astagrass cold, cold squat that was, uh, that was uh, ticked on the, on the list. Yep. I think something else that you mentioned in your, um, when we interviewed you for the mm-hmm. job, but also someone has already mentioned it, is you're, you're quite big into, into the mindfulness side of things. Oh, yeah. Which I think is really cool because we said that, we were joking that someone said that you're quite mindful with your uh, call down, which I think is fantastic. Mm-hmm. But you compare it to like mine at Mark, which is very much like optional stretch if you want to, and then <laughs> out we go. Bye bye. Yeah, Yours yeah. is a little bit more, you're, you're very much into the mindfulness. And I think I remember you, you, you mentioned about like you're quite big into like the mental health side of things as yes, well. Yes, so. 100%. 100%. Um, I've 
So I've done yoga for quite a long while. Okay. Um, I'm not qualified by any means or anything like that, but I just, I really enjoy kind of, so I feel like exercise is not just for your body, really. It's of just, course. obviously, Absolutely. it's for your mind as yeah. well and for your emotional well-being as well. And I like to um, embed things like that into my training, um, whether it's a breathing exercise at the end of the session or a little bit of reflection at the end of the session um, or just having a chat with each other on yeah. what did you do well, what could you have done better or even outside of training. I think yeah. it's 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 a good thing. Um I think yeah. it's, I genuinely think it's fantastic. It sounds like I'm taking the myth, but I'm not, I'm genuinely think it's great. Because um, <laughs> in, ter like <laughs> in terms of cool down, like the, the research is very limited on like mm -hmm. stretches for recovery and from, mm -hmm. from cooling down from sessions. So I'm not a massive uh, believer in that. People mm -hmm. like to do it, so we do it. But my main thing is just trying to get people to start the breathing down and just kind of relax. And that's the same idea, really. It's just taking a few minutes just to relax. Uh, right. think about your session like you said reflect and then mm -hmm. you can take that forward into your next session but mainly just just having some a period of time just to relax after yeah 100 percent. yeah I totally agree with you with with me on that I feel like what I'm trying to focus on is just bringing you back to the parasympathetic <sighs> system yes exactly exactly so you so you that you're calm down because you're quite like you know go go, go on the session all of that yeah. and then you just need to calm down a little 100%. bit when yeah before you go back into the especially real world, if it's kind of. if it's in the morning you got to get to work yeah you've exactly. just done some hard sprints and you you're running into the office you're yeah. amped up so it's definitely cool to have that yeah, little 100%. bit of that what with the the mental health side of things is that something that you found benefited yourself or just like from working with um when you was a personal trainer or is it just something you've read into um it's yeah it's a, it's very personal um because i have let's not get too uh yeah, yeah don't yeah. get too deep <laughs> yeah, no, uh, don't, don't worry yeah. don't worry i'm not revealing anything but yeah i i have struggled with mental health problems in the past and um exercise was definitely something that helped me um and i've always been the type of coach who tried to be that person for their clients as well yeah. so I always felt like it was more than what we're doing in the gym like I want I wanted them to you know just be better people just yeah. come to be able to come to me to have that trust between us to have conversations and yeah. make your them... points of contact to discuss other stuff just to overall health and, yeah, yeah exactly exactly so that that's why Kind fantastic of. yeah no again i think it's great and it's really you know relevant to the times now that you know there's a bigger focus on mental health mm -hmm. in the world and i think it's great that that's part of your yeah your coaching and i think yeah it's really important so yeah. hopefully that can uh yeah that and we'll all be doing namaste <laughs> at the end of our, uh, yeah <laughs> yeah fantastic so i think that covers everything in terms of your your training kind of your your background did you work mm -hmm. any uh any rubbish jobs I worked at Primark quite famously when I was uh, 18. Did you have any uh... mm, rubbish jobs? Um, yeah, like, a, like a job before working in sport, I should say. Not rubbish jobs. Mm, I mean, Zumba, I, I had I had a lot of others. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I <laughs> I was working for my university in the admissions department as an admissions officer. So for, that's, uh, yes. yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> that's probably something that people would not believe me yeah. that I was doing it because it doesn't really suit my personality. Yeah. Um, there was another job that I did that people don't really believe that I was doing it, but I really enjoyed it. I was a laboratory technician. Um, For a second there, when you said then you went lab, I thought you were going to say lab dancer. <laughs> 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 so, a, a lab, <laughs> uh, a, lab okay. a, a lab technician. Yeah, a lab cool. I guess that's more linked to the food side of things. Or? Yes, exactly. So I was, again, working at the university, kind of just... Um, setting up practical sessions, running them. Cool. Um, so yeah, I, I, I didn't have jobs that I absolutely no, like hated. Yeah, that's like great. That. So yeah. I'm lucky. Uh, yeah. No, no, well, lucky. I guess because you did the zombie from such a young age that it yeah. was just naturally you were already in the environment. Mm -hmm. So yeah. hopefully this isn't the job that you talk about <laughs> yeah. in future. Where you yeah. say this is your, yeah, in a future podcast, I will slag you all off. Yeah. <laughs> outside, of the, uh, outside of the gym and outside of work, what do you enjoy doing? Any other hobbies or any things you enjoy doing in your spare time? Um, I really enjoy reading. I mainly do like non-fictional stuff. Okay. Um, over fictional books. Um, but yeah, I think these kind of placements and like 
training and all of that takes up a lot of my time. Yeah. Um, as I mentioned, yoga is definitely something. Is that, that something you still do? Yes. Do you go to a yes. place to do it or do you do it? Uh, I used to. Um, it's, it was a bit of both. Sure. So I used to go to a, a yoga studio in the city centre. Um, it was literally just a five minute walk from me. Yeah. So that really suited me. And I do it at home as well. But I do prefer like the class setting of it. Sure. Yeah. So, yeah. Do you do uh, hot yoga or do you prefer just like Ashtanga? Or... It's more like, yeah, what, what, yeah, the Ashtanga side of it. I have never tried hot yoga. No, okay. Yeah. I think everyone you... gets, no, I have always wanted to do it. Um, mm-hmm. I've done a, a few, uh, a little bit of yoga. Um, I used to work in a commercial gym and there was a guy um, that I used to actually do like, a uh, little bit of PT for when mm-hmm. he used to do one-on-one yoga. Oh, and it, nice. was, it was very based around like, I want to get better at, well, I want to feel, feel a bit more flexible and more mm-hmm. for powerlifting. So it was mm-hmm. very, lots of hip stuff, lots of like um, thoracic yeah, work. Yeah. Yeah. It was pretty cool. Um, yeah, we did that for, for quite a while actually. Um, yeah, and then, sounds good. Yeah, I did a, a yoga session. I went to um, the Cotswolds and we uh, we booked like this treetop yoga. Uh, so like, it was like yoga. so it was like in the top of like a treehouse kind of thing, overlooking like the Cotswolds. But it was at like, so cool. but it was six pm at night in winter, so it was actually dark. <laughs> oh. uh, so the idea was there, but it didn't quite uh, pan out. Yeah. But it's still pretty cool to do. Um, <laughs> so anything else like you enjoy doing? You did cinema. Mm, I'm actually not not a big fan of like watching movies or anything okay. like that. Um, I prefer like books, definitely books. Um, books, but yeah, oh, that's I'm- that's all. I think books and training books and training yeah I do a lot of cooking and baking as well but it's not because I like it it's because I feel like I have to do it (laughs) so that doesn't count yeah 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 cool um okay I think that pretty much uh is a good introduction to Mm -hmm. yourself um to finish up with we're going to do two truths and a lie I'm going to guess and then we're going to ask uh, you guys to comment and um, get in touch if you listen to this, have a guess. Um, So, yeah. Okay. So first one is going to be that my favorite sport to watch is gymnastics. Uh, Second is that I listen to rock and heavy metal when I'm lifting heavy weights. And then the third one is that... (laughs) <laughs> I think that I have two older bl- brothers. Okay. Yeah. I mean, they could all, they, they, they could all be true. Um. <laughs> so me thinking now, I think you like mobility, you like flexibility, you like training. I think you'd be very impressed with the gymnastics. So I believe that. I believe because you're from Hungary, apparently, and they all <laughs> listen to rock. I believe that you uh you listen to the rock when you when you're training and. Because you hesitated and forgot the third one, <laughs> I'm going to say you haven't got to all the bubbles. That is my guess. But guys, comment below and most importantly, when you see Kitty in the gym, uh, introduce yourself, say hello, and well, make her feel welcome in the gym. We're really looking forward to having you on board. Thank you so and, much. And uh, yeah, that was your introduction to Kitty, guys. And we will see you next time with a bit more of an informative podcast. But yeah, we will speak to you soon. Thank you so much. See you later.